Hello and uh, welcome all of you. So today uh, we are starting with the unit number five, and uh, in that first lecture today we will cover. Already before these uh, uh, last unit we have seen unit number six. In that unit six we have seen uh, what is the code optimization, then uh, what is the need of the code optimization, different techniques of performing the code optimization. as well as also uh, we have discussed the types of the code of optimization in that uh, local optimization global optimization techniques related with the local optimization then uh, techniques related with the global optimization uh, some extra uh, structure required to do the global optimization like uh, data flow analysis uh, control flow analysis also we have discussed the loop optimization techniques also and uh, all these things we have discussed with the examples so today we are starting with the unit number 5 and uh, in that uh, first lecture we are discussing so our unit number 5 consists of the code generation that is the, our last phase of compiler if you see the block diagram of our uh, pages of the compiler in that our last phase is nothing but the related with the code generation as uh, so today we will discuss about the issues in the code generation and also we will see the our last phase working that is a code generation with example okay so if you see the compiler subject starting from our first lecture the lecture which i have discussed in physically also so uh, compiler sub design subject consists of the six unit and each unit consists of the different pages of the compiler so in the first unit as all of you know first unit uh, was related with the lexical uh, introduction of compiler and first phase of compiler that is the lexical analysis so already you know the phases of the compiler is nothing but compiler uh, phases of the compiler is nothing but the uh, different uh, what we can say stages in the compilation so also here i have mentioned the compilation process is consist of the sequence of various phases and uh, accordingly our syllabus is being designed and uh, six unit we have the six phases okay and uh, okay so only the fourth unit uh, is related with the uh, some uh, different uh, related things related to the run time environment okay and uh, you know the each phase take the input from its previous phase generate some output and give that output as the input to the next phase of compiler like already we have discussed the first unit where the first unit is related with the introduction of compiler and first phase of compiler that is the lexical analyzer So the lexical analyzer taking the input as a source code, any higher level language uh, code as a input, and then it is generating the tokens. So in the lexical analysis uh, unit, we have seen what is the lexical analyzer, uh, what is its role, how it generates the tokens, what are the different kind of lexical errors, and the automatic tool for the lexical analysis. So uh, also the automatic tool for the lexical analysis that is the lex tool. Also we have discussed. then how the uh, lexical analyzer uh, perform its working uh, what is the pattern what is the regular expression with the help of the pattern how the token can be get recognized with the help of the regular expression how you can write the pattern these all the things we have discussed in the first unit then output of our lexical analyzer is the token which is the, which is given to the next phase of compiler that is the syntax analyzer which which phase that phase take the input as a token from the lexical analyzer then in the uh, syntax analyzer or the parser also we have discussed what is exactly parser its role different kind of syntax error then how it uh, combine the tokens and how it uh, try to determine the syntax of the sentence or the expression then what are the automatic tool to generate the syntax analyzer in that we have discussed the yak tool okay as well as the different uh, technique in the parsing we have seen the top down parsing bottom up parsing with example all these things we have discussed and along with that also we have discussed every time what is the working of the symbol table uh, how it is being referred by different pages when it start when uh, it is getting generated during the lexical analysis it get generated okay and related with the each phase we have discussed the how the errors get handled and how the errors get generated okay then syntax analyzer generate the parse tree as output and which is given as the input to the next phase that is the semantic analyzer so related with the semantic analyzer also we have discussed what is the semantic analyzer its role so its role is nothing but to determine the meaning of the sentence and the expression 
by generating the annotated parse tree then in that we have discussed the syntax directory translation which helps uh, to determine the meaning of the statement okay and then semantic analyzer also generated the one output that is annotated parse tree or modified parse tree which is given as to the next phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generator okay then intermediate code generator take the input as a annotated parse tree and generate some intermediate code so in the intermediate code we have discussed the what is the intermediate code what is its need different type of intermediate code like three address code dag syntax tree and uh, what is the important uh, intermediate code out of that that is the three address code we have discussed then different way of representation of three address code we have discussed like order wrapper triple indirect triple etc then intermediate code uh, as a uh, input is given to the next phase that is the this is our back end of the compiler and this is our front end of the compiler okay so intermediate code as a output from the intermediate code generated phase is given to the next phase that is a machine independent code optimization and that is the last unit we have discussed we are different techniques of the optimization we have discussed okay that already i told you and now we have reached up to the last phase of compiler that is the code generation phase okay so here code optimization after optimizing the code generate the three address code what is the difference between this three address code and this three address code difference is what this three address code is the uh, unoptimized whereas this three address code is the optimized code okay then now we are come at this phase which is the code generation phase and today we will discuss about the code generation phase okay and then our last phase is uh, last phase is remaining that is the machine dependent code optimization so that will also we will discuss in this unit one okay so let's start with the last phase of compiler that is a our code generation phase you all of you know the compilation process is nothing but consists of the various phases and each phase take the input from the previous stage and produce some output and give that output to the next phase of compiler likewise first phase as a lexical analysis take the input in the form of higher level language it generate the tokens as output then it give that token as a output uh, then it give that token as a input to the next phase of compiler that is the syntax analyzer where it check the whether expression is syntactically correct or not by generating the parse tree then syntax analyzer give the parse tree as a input to the semantic analyzer semantic analyzer check the meaning of the statement whether it is correct or not whether statement is meaningful or not by generating the annotated parse tree and then syntax analyzer give that as a input to the intermediate code generator and intermediate code generate the code in the form of three address code that also last time we have seen then next phase that is the code optimization code optimization take the input from the previous phase and input in the form of the three address code and that input uh, which is being received by the code optimizer code optimizer try to make the changes in that code if it is possible uh, try to uh, do the rearrangement of the code so that efficiency of the compiler can be improved the program can be executed faster and within a less space and then code optimizer give that particular whatever the output generated in the form of the three address code it to the next phase of compiler that is the code generator okay and so today we are going to discuss about the code generator that's the last phase of compiler so this diagram we are all very uh, very much familiar from first lecture of this unit number 3 we are discussing about this uh, figure and in that different phases we are discussing so we have reached to the this point now today we have to discuss the code generator phase now in the last time we have seen the how the code optimizer does the code optimization and generate the particular optimized code so this output of the code optimizer is also the three address code but with the optimized code okay by doing some changes in the previous intermediate code code optimizer optim code optimizer generate the optimized three address code and then it uh, that optimized uh, intermediate code as a three address code is given as a input to the last phase of compiler that is the code generator okay and here you can see what is the work of the code generator so work of the code generator is nothing but here you can see code generator generate the target core or the machine code okay code generator does what generate the target core or the 
machine code understood by taking by doing the processing on the input it has received from the previous phase of compiler okay now so what exactly is the work of the last phase of compiler that is nothing but the generation of target code here i have mentioned generation of target program or the machine code or the target code understood so it as a final phase of compiler uh, it has to generate the code in the form of the uh, machine code format okay so here also i have mentioned the same thing code generation is the final phase of compiler it get the input from code optimization phase and produce the target code or the object code as a result so it take the input from the uh, this code optimization phase as a optimized code and try to produce the target code or the object code or the machine code as a final result okay so uh, intermediate instruction or the intermediate code is translated into the sequence of machine instruction okay whatever the intermediate code is there that is in the form of the optimized form that will be get converted into the machine instruction format now which are the different uh, activities that involve and that activity has to be performed by the code generator in the code generation phase these are nothing but the different kind of activity like allocation of registers and the memory generation of correct code references generation of correct data types and generation of missing code okay so uh, these are the different activity that has to be uh, uh, done by the code generation phase okay now next important question which is uh, being most of the time asked in the exam related with the code generation phase is nothing but the different issues in the code generation okay what different issues in the code generation so different issues in the code generation in the sense uh, what what kind of uh, what kind of uh, the requirement from the code generator means what kind of code that has to be generated by the code generator phase the expectation from the code generator or the uh, requirement from the particular uh, code generation phase what kind of code that has to be generated by the code generator what kind of input it required how it utilize the register memory how what will be the order of evaluation of uh, different instruction so that different things comes under the issues in the code generation okay so issue meaning of the issues you have to uh, keep in mind uh, the particular uh, what kind of things uh, needed to be provided uh, to the code generation phase and what kind of code the code generator must generate uh, how the code generator uh, do the memory allocation that everything comes under the issues in the code generator okay now as you know these are the different phases already we have discussed this is a part of our compiler so whenever the system programmer is designing the compiler he has to think about each phase and accordingly the system programmer has to design the each phase of the compiler understood so same thing is during the last phase of compiler okay so, so when the system programmer is designing the last phase of compiler that is the target code generation so that time which things he should keep in mind okay which things he should keep in mind that things comes under the that thing comes in the uh, uh, category of different issues in the code generation okay so whenever the system programmer designing this last phase of compiler that is the target code generator generation or the code generation code generator phase so that the designer of the that particular compiler uh, must take into account the different kind of uh, requirements understood different kind of issues he must uh, take care while designing the last phase of compiler so that things comes under the issues in the code generation phase okay so all these things uh, we can see these phases comes under the category of front end so front end is considered to be the machine independent okay and this last two phases comes under the category of the back end and so we are discussing the last phase of uh, compiler in the back end today okay and back end is considered to be the machine dependent okay so uh, code generator converts the intermediate representation of source code into the form that can be executed by the machine so code generator has to be convert the code uh, in the form so that it can be easily executed by the computer machine okay and computer machine can execute the code only if it is in the form of the machine language format okay so a code generator is expected to generate the correct machine code 
okay designing of code generator should be done in the such a way that it can be easily implemented and the tested and the maintained okay so while designing of the code generator phase the system programmer who is designing the last phase of compiler so he has to think about the different uh, requirement he has to think about the different issues he has to think about the different expectation related with that uh, final phase of compiler and that things we are going to discuss here in the point that is the issues in the code generation okay so in that we have the first issue in the code generation phase that is the input to the code generator what first issue is what input to the code generator okay now here input to the code generator is nothing but is it is going to be the intermediate code okay optimize intermediate code okay what will be the input to the code generator optimize intermediate code okay so it will receive that uh, optimize intermediate code okay intermediate code is a consider here you can consider the intermediate code is also the part of the front end of the compiler okay so intermediate code is generated by the front end of the compiler then it is optimized in the code optimization phase okay so here i have mentioned the input to the code generator is the intermediate code generated by the front end along with the information in the symbol table okay so intermediate code uh, you, you know the intermediate code can be you can consider the intermediate code can be in the any form it can be in the quadruple form triple form indirect triple form it can be in the form of the syntax tree tag etc but as we have discussed most commonly the intermediate code is always used to be in the form of the uh, these three forms which is the representation of our three address code so it is used to be in the form of the tag it is used to be in the form of the three address code okay so whenever the code uh, reaches to the this particular last phase of compiler then last phase of compiler consider that that code is a completely error free there is a no semantic errors there is a no syntactic errors there is a no lexical errors etc etc okay so that thing i have mentioned here the code generation phase just proceed on the assumption that input are free from all syntactic semantic errors necessary type checking has been takes place the type conversion operators have been inserted whenever necessary etc etc okay so meaning of this meaning of this paragraph is what whenever the final phase of compiler that is the target code generator phase receive the input from its previous phases the target code generator consider or assume that that code is without any kind of error there is a no syntactic error semantic error there is a no issue related with the type checking etc etc so in short the code that has to be given to the target code generator phase it should be the error free code so that is being assumed by the last phase of compiler that whatever the code it is receiving it is free of all different kind of errors so that is the first issue uh, requirement uh, first issue or the requirement in case of the code generator phase okay uh, that is what input to the code generator what kind of input should be given to the code generator phase that is the first issue in the code generation so what kind of input should be given input should be in the form of the some intermediate code it should be without any kind of error it should not there should not be any syntactic error semantic errors etc etc so that is the first issue in the code generation that is the input to the code generator okay the next important issue in the code generation phase is a uh, memory management that is what memory management okay so during the memory management the code generator phase has to take the help of symbol table that as you can see in this diagram every phase has to refer the symbol table the same uh, in the similar way you can see the code generator phase also referring the symbol table okay so why it is required to refer to the symbol table while doing the memory allocation or while doing the memory management because code generator phase has to also uh, code generator phase also need to do the memory allocation for the different symbol present in that particular program etc okay now how the memory allocation can be done you know to do the memory allocation the code generator phase must know the what is the data type of different symbols what is the size of the memory that will be required etc etc so that everything is done in the this target code generation phase that is the memory management and for that purpose during the code generation process 
the symbol table entries have to be mapped to the actual addresses and labels have to be mapped to the instruction addresses means what using the symbol table the target code generation phase has to do the memory management so that each different uh, symbol which is present in the program the memory for that can be allotted okay and how it can be done it can be done by mapping the symbol mapping the symbol present in the symbol table with their actual addresses okay so mapping the name in the source program to the addresses of data is co is co cooperatively done by the front end and the code generator okay so here the code generation phase has to take the help of the front end of the compiler to do the memory management because uh, the whatever information regarding the uh, memory requirement for different symbol for different function that information is available to the front end of the compiler and that is the reason uh, the there is there should be a cooperative work uh, need to be done by the code generation phase and the front end of the compiler okay and accordingly to the different variable symbols present in the uh, program the memories get allocated for example here i have mentioned if there are some local variables are present in your program the stack allocation is done for that okay if there are some global variables are there then static area memory is allocated for that global variables so accordingly uh, depends on the type of the variables are available depends on the type of the function you are utilizing the program depends on the different structure you are utilizing the program accordingly memory has to be allocated and that is nothing but the second issue uh, in case of the code generation phase that is the memory management that is nothing but what how the code generation phase do the memory management uh, to the different uh, uh, variables functions structure which is present in the source code of the program okay so that is the that thing has to be keep in mind while designing the uh, code generation phase by the system programmer okay uh, so that the proper memory management can be done by the target code generation phase or the code generation phase okay then uh, next we have the next important issue in the code generation that is the instruction selection now as you know what kind of input received by the code generation phase input received in the form of some intermediate code instruction okay for each of these intermediate code instruction machine code is generated by the code generation phase that is the last phase of compile okay now for particular one instruction there might be a different uh, for particular uh, one intermediate code instruction there can be a different uh, machine code instruction may be available more than one machine code instruction may be available understood so out of these uh, the target code generation phase has to do the selection that which instruction which machine instruction should be select so that the efficiency of the program will be improved understood so that is the reason the issue is here instruction selection the proper instruction selection for each intermediate code instruction must be done okay so uh, what kind of things has to be considered Uh, when the machine instruction has to be selected, so the, that instruction which will be selected for the particular intermediate code instruction, that instruction must be complete. It must be uniform. That instruction must be correct. Okay. And if the instruction selection is done uh, by considering this factor, then definitely the machine code that will be get generated that will be a efficient machine code. Okay. But uh, uh, if if the if if the if you don't care about the efficiency of the target program means efficiency of the target program in the sense if we if we don't consider about the uh, how much time it will require to execute how much space it will require then the selection of the instruction can be done in the straight forward way straight forward way in the sense then that time uh, there is no need to think about uh, uh, which instruction is uh, better than other instruction for particular intermediate code instruction understood means uh, if there is a some instruction in the machine code uh, as a machine instruction which can be faster than the other instruction then uh, definitely the which, the machine code instruction which is faster than other that definitely will improve the efficiency of the target program understood so uh, so if these things consider then definitely the target code that will be generated that will be the efficient target code and if you don't compare the instruction for each intermediate code if you don't compare the 
machine instruction for each intermediate code instruction and if you do it in the straight forward way without thinking about the which is better than other then then also your target code will be correct but uh, it may not be a efficient target code or the efficient target program okay so the main thing in case of the third issue in the code generation is what selection of the instruction the proper instruction for each intermediate code has to be selected so that the efficient target code machine code can be generated okay so this is our third issue that is nothing but selection of the instruction selection of the machine instruction for each intermediate code instruction what selection of the intermediate selection of the machine instruction or the uh, machine code for each intermediate code understood because each machine you know the machine is having their instruction set each machine is having their proper instruction set and out of that instruction set for each intermediate code the instruction has to be selected and if that selection of the instruction uh, is uh, proper then definitely our final target program will be a efficient target program okay then the fourth important issue is nothing but the related with the register allocation now i hope all of you are know that uh, registers are always faster than the memory okay here i have mentioned use of register make the computation faster in comparison of that memory okay so uh, registers are always considered to be the faster than the memory but you know the registers are limited okay what registers are limited and then as the registers are limited the allocation of register has to be done in the careful manner understood and that is the reason our fourth issue is nothing but the register allocation issues so how the register can be allocated so that uh, maximum uh, register can be utilized for the uh, um, uh, particular uh, allocation purpose okay so the use of registers are subdivided into sub divided into the two uh, important uh, problems okay so one is the during a register allocation so in that first uh, 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 problem is register allocation and register assignment so allocation and the assignment so what happened during the assignment we select only those variables that will reside in the registers so during the register allocation what we select we select the variables that will place in that register and during the res register assignment we pick up the specific registers what we do we pick up the or we choose the specific register uh, and in that specific register we uh, assign the variable understood so here register allocation is nothing but uh, choosing the variable first and alloc uh, and allocating it to the register here in the register assignment choosing the register first and then assigning it to the variables okay so uh, in this way uh, the register allocation uh, need to be done and uh, proper selection uh, proper utilization of registers uh, need to be done related with the particular machine so if the proper uh, utilization of register can be done and maximum register if it is being get utilized then definitely execution speed or the computation speed of our program can be improved understood so this is our fourth issue that is the register allocation which can be done with the help of the register allocation and the register assignment and maximum utilization of register can be done so how the maximum utilization of register can be done that thing is get uh, sorted out in the fourth issue that is the register allocation issue okay then next issue in the code generation is the evaluation order what evaluation order now uh, the main another task which is done by the code generation phase is the thing but uh, it decide the order in which the instruction will be executed now your program is having the large number of instruction okay large number of instruction now in which order this instruction should be executed okay from the top side from the bottom side from the middle side so in which order this instruction will be executed out of this number of instruction which instruction should be executed first that is nothing but the issue of evaluation order so that also need to be decided by the code generation phase understood because the order of the computation or order of the uh, execution of that particular instruction 
also affect on the efficiency of the target code understood so in which order instruction will be executed that also depend that also uh, affect the particular what you can say the efficiency of the compiler okay so uh, there may be a different computation order or the evaluation order may be possible okay uh, if you utilize some one order one evaluation order using that you may not get the uh, result faster but if you utilize the another evaluation order you may get the result faster so that 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 particular decide that particular uh, uh, what you can say that particular uh, thinking on this particular issue has to be done by the uh, last phase of compiler that is the target code generation phase and uh, then the target code generation phase has to uh, decide in which order the instruction should get executed so that the program can get executed the program can get executed faster understood so different evaluation orders can be uh, checked by the compiler and the last phase of compiler and accordingly the particular order can be get selected and uh, that evaluation order may be get choose uh, to do the evaluation or to do the computation of the instruction in order to get the result faster execution result faster okay so in this case uh, generally uh, the in which order the intermediate code is being generated okay which are the particular order in which the intermediate code is generated the same order is being followed by the target code generation phase also understood what i am saying if the, the the particular order which is being there when the intermediate code generation is done the same order can be followed by the target code generation phase for what purpose for the computation purpose or for the execution purpose understood so this is a common approach the common approach is what whatever the order which is followed by the intermediate code generation phase the same order can be followed by the target code generation phase for the purpose of computation of certain instruction okay so this is our fifth phase where uh, the decision uh, the decision is being taken related with uh, the in which order the instruction should get executed okay and uh, generally the common approach utilized uh, to decide the order is what the same order which is being uh, there when the intermediate code is being generated okay so this is the our fifth issue uh, in case of the uh, issues in the code generation okay and then uh, we have the last issue in the code generation that is the target program generation okay so here you will you will have the target program as a output of our target uh, our target code generation phase or output of our last phase of compiler will be what target program so here i have mentioned the target program is the output of the code generator phase okay now output can be generated in the different uh, form okay like the output may be a absolute machine language code the output may be a relocate relocatable machine language code other the output may be in the form of the assembly language code okay so let's consider if the output is in the absolute machine language code means what so here i have mentioned if the output is in the absolute machine language code format then advantage of uh, uh, of that is what that particular machine language code can be placed in the fixed memory location and can be immediately executed okay so as i said the output generated by this target program target code generation phase can be in this different form it may be in the absolute machine language code it may be a relocated machine language code it may be a assembly language so if it is absolute machine language code absolute in the sense it can be placed in the fixed memory location and it can be immediately executed okay so if your machine language code is in the absolute machine language form then it can be a place in the fixed memory location and then it can be executed from that okay but if your output as a machine code is in the form of relocatable machine language code what relocatable machine language code so if this is if this is a machine language code is generated then related with the relocatable machine language code form as it is a name here you can see it is a relocatable machine language code you can change the memory location as per the availability of the memory location 
and you can execute the particular machine language code from the different memory location because it is what it is relocatable means you can change the memory location of that particular machine language code where in case of the absolute machine language code you cannot change the memory uh, memory location of that machine language code you have to execute it from the fixed memory location but if the machine language code which is generated is the relocatable machine language code then you can change its memory location and you can execute from the available you can execute from the particular available memory location okay and if the uh, particular target code which is generated is assembly language if the target code which is generated is the assembly language then again it has to be converted into the binary form by the assembler okay so uh, here the input which we have given that is in the form of the higher level language for example c language in c language program you are doing and you have compiled it so here if you get the assembly language code if you get the assembly language code as a output then assembly language code is also considered as a machine code as compared with this high level language code if this is your higher level language code then this assembly language code which is generated here is considered as a low level language code understood so this is the issue in the last uh, this is the last issue in the code generation that is a what kind of target program may be generated by the target code generation phase and what kind of machine code can be generated it can be absolute machine language code if it is absolute machine language code it has to be executed from the fixed fixed memory location if it is a relocatable machine language code then it can be executed from the particular available memory location if it is assembly language code then it has again need to be converted into the binary form okay so here we are taking the example now this uh, different issues has to be uh, uh, has to be taken care by the uh system programmer when he is designing the last phase of compiler that is the target code generation so here you can see uh six different issue in the code generation phase we have discussed that is the input to the code generator means what kind of input should be given to the target code generation phase it should be error free uh, it should be in the form of intermediate code etc then second issue we have discussed related with the target code generation phase that is nothing but the related to the memory management how the memory manage how the memory can be allocated to the different symbols by utilizing the symbol table how the memory can be allocated to the different kind of variables like the local variables global variables etc etc that is our second issue in the code generation third issue is nothing but the selection of the instruction for each intermediate code instruction what which machine code instruction will be select and how this selection should be done so that efficient target program can be done so third issue is related with the selection of the machine instruction for each intermediate code instruction then fourth issue we have seen regarding the register allocation how the register can be utilized so that your computation can be faster as you know registers are faster than the memory okay so in that uh, uh, register allocation and the register assignment can be done we are in the register allocation the first we choose the variable to put in that register where in the register assignment the choice of register is done first and then the variable get selected then fifth issue we have seen which order of the execution of instruction must be uh, selected means here the code generation phase has to decide the order in which the instruction should be get executed that is the evaluation order and generally which order get prefer the order which is utilized during the intermediate code generation okay and last issue we have seen what kind of target program will be get generated by the target code generation phase okay and lastly we are going to discuss about this particular uh, what you can see the example now as i said what kind of input is given to the target code generation phase the input which is given to the target code generation phase that is nothing but the intermediate code okay this is our intermediate code now if you, if you see this intermediate code now this intermediate code is unoptimized this intermediate code is all is what unoptimized so this is nothing but the output of our fourth phase of compiler output of our fourth phase of compiler which is the fourth phase of our compiler intermediate code generation okay and in the fifth phase of compiler what you will do we will do the optimization code optimization and that is the reason here you can see this is the optimized intermediate code that is nothing but what 
the output of our fifth phase of compiler understood so this is also the intermediate code and this is also the intermediate code. but this is the optimize intermediate code that is given as a input to our last phase of compiler what is our last phase of compiler that today we are discussing the code generation phase the target code generation phase so to the target code generation phase we will give the input as a optimized intermediate code this optimized intermediate code will give the input to the our last phase of compiler and then you can see here the following assembly code is generated for optimized code in code generation phase so here we have taken the uh, example of this is the machine code will be get generated much assembly code as a machine code we are uh, uh, considering here okay because this is the low level language code as compared to our c language code understood again this has to be converted into the binary form okay that will be done by the assembler but just for the understanding purpose for this intermediate code we are considering this as a machine language code okay so that you can understand the uh, how the instruction will be selected Uh, etc so as i said for now how now how for this intermediate code how for this intermediate code the machine language code in the form of assembly code will be generated so for this intermediate code this is the assembly language code as a machine code will be get generated okay so here what you can see the first instruction this is the machine instruction assembly language machine instruction move r1 id3 means first we are moving the id3 so this this particular now you know if you, you need you need to uh, you need to remember for this example x is equal to a plus b into 50.0 this into 50 sorry into 50 this is our original example and this original example we have processed in the lexical analysis syntax analysis semantic analysis intermediate code generation and also we have done the processing on this in the optimized code and when you do the optimize uh, when we do the code optimization on these things this is the optimized intermediate code we have got for this instruction uh, okay for this expression and then we are converting this particular optimized intermediate code into the machine code as a assembly code so here first we move the id3 into the register as you know the you need to you need to move the things into the register before you do the uh, processing on that then then you are doing the multiplication of that that's why mul r1 into 50.0 means whatever the content is there in the r1 you need to multiply it with the 50.0 so we have done this instruction then next move r2 comma id2 means move the id2 what, what is our id2 id2 is the a okay id3 was b okay so move a into the r2 then add r1 and the r2 means for this instruction machine code inst uh, machine instruction is this add r1 and r2 means add the content of r1 and the r2 now what was there in the r1 r1 was containing the first instruction and r2 is, is nothing but our uh, this uh, sorry r2 add r1 and the r2 okay r1 is containing the r1 is containing our uh, result of this multiplication okay and r2 is containing what id2 r2 is containing what id2 means uh, your a okay so then you are adding r1 and r2 that is nothing but the a plus b into 50 because r1 containing what b into 50 and r2 containing what a so then you are doing the addition of this r1 and r2 and moving the and the result will be in the where in the r1 okay and lastly you are moving that result of r uh, the content of r1 into the id1 means you are putting the result into the our la variable x that is considered as a id1 our variable x, x is what id1 so in this way you can see how the machine instruction will be get selected here you can see how the registers are being get utilized as a example i have shown you here and how the machine code will be generated in the form of the assembly code for these kind of intermediate code 
okay and again this assembly language code is converted into the binary form by our uh, uh, assembler understood so that we need to that for that we need to uh, we don't have to uh, bother about this last point where if you understood up to this point only then also it is very much sufficient understood so this is our journey this is our journey from first phase of compiler to the last phase so you can see as a input we have think about this expression x is equal to a plus b into 50.0 this express uh, x is equal to a plus b into 50 this expression we have consider as a source code as a one example you are just taking okay but for the whole source code this all the processing is being get done that we have seen in each phase of compiler for your understanding purpose we have just taken this just as a example okay now this expression is given to the lexical analyzer then lexical analyzer generate the token out of it token like the which are the identifier which are the keywords which are the operators which are the constant that all the recognition of token is done by first phase of compiler for this expression and this is done for the whole contents of the program out of this whole content of the program we have just taken example as a single expression for your understanding purpose then lexical analyzer give that token to the syntax analyzer then syntax analyzer will check whether this expression is syntactically correct or not then it how it check by generating the parse key then syntax analyzer generate generate the parse key for this expression give that parse key to the semantic analyzer then semantic analyzer check whether this expression is meaningful or not and if it is fine it is not meaningful as x is a float a is a float b is a float 50 is integer so it is not finding it meaningful so semantic analyzer will do what convert the 50 into the 50.0 means it do the type checking if it don't find the type compatible if it if it is don't find that expression is uh, type compatible then it convert into the type compatible expression by converting the 50 into the 50.0 accordingly it does it for the whole programs for the all the instruction which is present in the program then semantic analyzer generate the annotated parse tree and give it to the next phase that is the intermediate code generator and we have seen how the intermediate code is generated for this expression in the form of the three address code then this phase give that intermediate code as a three address code as a input to the next phase that is the machine independent code optimization then code optimization is done on that intermediate code and optimized code will be generated by doing some changes and then code generator finally generate the machine code in the form of the assembly code or in the form of the absolute machine language code or in the form of the relocatable machine code here we are considering the code generation phase generating the assembly language code as a machine code and here we have finish our all the six phases of compiler where we have seen how the compiler will process your source language code which is in the higher level language into the lower level language code i hope all of you understood the all the six phases of compiler if you have any doubt you can mention that doubts in the comment section i will definitely answer all